Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, as we celebrate universally the Sunday of the Word, Sunday in ordinary time, we enthrone the scriptures here. But I pray, we pray, the church prays that we will enthrone the scriptures in our homes and more so in our hearts. Amen? Amen. That there will be a special place, a prominent place for the Word of God in the assembly, in our lives, in our coming and our going, in our relationships, that we will always know that we have God's Word to guide us, to inspire us, to challenge us, to motivate us, to sanctify us, and to save us. Amen? Amen. Join me as we pray. Father God, uh, we thank you for your word uh, in our lives and in the life of the church. We ask you, O oh God, uh, to bless uh, our homes with your word. Bless our lives with your word. Bless our parish in and through your word. I pray, O oh God, uh, that your word may lead us uh, to eternal life. Amen. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Uh, Amen. Amen. We turn to God now and we ask for pardon because in our lives the word sometimes is not the light onto our steps and the lamp onto our path. Sometimes in our lives we quench the word, we disobey the word and the word is the last thing on our minds. And so we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us all our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty ever living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord was addressed to Jonah. Up, he said, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach to them as I told you to. Jonah set out and went to Nineveh in obedience to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a city great beyond compare. It took three days to cross it. Jonah went on into the city, making a day's journey. He preached in these words, only 40 days more and Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed in God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior, and God relented. He did not inflict on them the disaster which he had threatened. The word of the Lord.
love shone from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to the to humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Lord, make me know your ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, our time is growing short. Those who have wives should live as though they had none. And those who mourn should live as though they had nothing to mourn for. Those who are enjoying life should live as though there were nothing to laugh about. Those whose life is buying things should live as though they had nothing of their own. And those who have to deal with the world should not become engrossed in it. I say this because the world as we know it is passing away. The word of the Lord. of God is close at hand. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And at once, they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, mending their nets. He called them at once, and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the men he employed, they went after him. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. So today is uh, Sunday of the Word. And together with millions and millions and millions of Catholics around the world, we are endeavoring, seeking to refocus on the Word of God. And so there are, there are, there are words that ought to be associated with how we treat with God's Word and how we view God's Word. So I wonder if God's word is special to us. That there's a prominent place for God's word in our lives and in our churches, in our schools. 
do we consider the Word of God special, important? Do we give God's Word prominence? Is God's Word central to us? And I think that's what Pope Francis is asking the Catholic community throughout the world. That God's Word must be central, it must be prominent, it must be significant, it must be special, because God's Word leads to salvation. I always say to, to my people that God's Word, the Word of God, the Scriptures, Revelation, is not information, but is invitation to a new life. It's invitation to embrace the Savior. It's invitation to be the new creation. Amen? Amen. Never, 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 ever treat the Word of God as information that never touches your life. It's always invitation to go deeper. Amen? And that's why Pope Francis says, treat the Word as special. Treat the Word as central. Treat the Word as important. Enthrone the Word of God in your lives, in your hearts, in your church. All of us have an end. And our end is holiness of life. St. Ignatius of Loyola once said that we were created to praise, to reverence, and to serve God. To praise, to reverence, and that's, all, that's what our life is about. That's the sum total of our lives. That our lives are about being converted into people who praise, reverence, and serve God. The scriptures of today, the liturgy of today is about conversion. Let's look at the first paragraph of the gospel. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. And listen to it. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Finish it. Repent and believe the good news. That we are always meant to be converted. Conversion is the end of our lives. It's, it's that to which we aspire, that we are always meant to come to conversion, deeper and deeper conversion. St. Paul tells us, all of us fall short of the glory of God. And that's why we are always on the road to conversion. I speak of myself. I need to be converted. Say amen, Father. Preach it, Father. You need to be converted. And it's my turn to tell all you, all you need to be converted. Amen? Because there are many people who count themselves as Catholic, but can't count themselves as converted. We tick a, a box in the census form, Isaac Catholic. But do we say, I am converted in Christ Jesus. And I'm being converted every day in Christ Jesus. And that's what the Sunday of the Word is about. Third Sunday of Ordinary Time every year. For us to come to terms, is God's word bringing conversion in our lives? Are we only hearers of the word and not doers of the word? Let's go to the first reading. And the word of the Lord was addressed to Shagonas up. And the word of God of the Lord was addressed to Shagonas up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, get up, 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 stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, right, turn around, turn around, turn around, make a 360, make a 360, make a 360, make a 360, right, you can sit down now, you can sit down now, I, I preach that in, in my new parish, Rosary, St. Martin, the poorest in Port of Spain. And I said to the people that God's word must move us. That God's word must have an influence in our lives that we are constantly being moved from one place to another. You know, just as Kes could move all in a fet, and Olatunji could move all in a fet, and Destra could move you in a fet. Right? You have to bear in your head 
and you, they will you they, they tell you jump you jump they tell you uh, you say how high Cass how high <laughs> um, um, we, we, if we talk if we talk about influence in our lives does God's word have an influence on our daily life just as the entertainers have an influence on us in a fet or in the carnival season just as Music may have a, 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 a hold on us. Does God's word have a hold on you? I ask you that as a people. Just as music could move you, is God's word moving us? And that's what uh, the Sunday of the word is about. So we have... We have uh, the, the, the call to conversion that God's word moves us to conversion. And the question must always be, God, are you moving me to a different place in my life? Are you inviting me to a different place in your life? That's the question in prayer for every Catholic. For every one of us, every time we come to Mass, to ask the question, Lord God, what are you saying to me in your word today? Whether it's the fourth Sunday of ordinary time, the second Sunday of Lent, the fifth Sunday of Easter, the third Sunday of Advent, the, the, the Christmas day, God, what are you saying? And we must want to be moved, we must want to be converted. And if you don't have a desire to be converted, say, Lord God, give me a desire to be converted. Give me desire, give me the grace to be converted, to desire, to want it, to want it bad, 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 bad. Do we want conversion bad, 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 bad? You see how sometimes you want to get back at somebody bad, 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 bad. Do, do we really want to be converted? Let me hear you. Bad, 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 bad. That is the grace. And, and so we will approach God's word in a special way because we know that God's word is life and it is new life and it is abundant life and it is a better life. So when we look at the first paragraph, we, we hear the call to conversion. Repent and believe the good news. But you and I know because of our humanity, things, things happen. And we are not always, we are not always hearing, repent and believe the good news. We are not always hearing the call to conversion. And there are two words that I want to us to reflect on. In the second paragraph and the third paragraph. And he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee... Jesus was walking along by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake. I'm going to put some questions to you tonight. Casting your net, that's your livelihood. And I ask you, the people of Shogonas, as I ask the people of Rosary and St. Martin, the poorest today, is our livelihood making a living getting in the way of our spiritual life because sometimes it does sometimes we have we so tired from work we have no time to pray sometimes we're so busy with projects and we're so busy with school and we're so busy with university that we have no time for sunday worship no time for personal prayer no time for community worship. I ask you, when we are casting our lake, our, our nets on the lake, do we have time to hear, follow me and I will make you into fishers of men. I will move you. I will give you something new. I will bring a new direction in your life. But sometimes we can't hear that. Why we can't hear that? Because we're too busy making a living. We're too busy paying the bills. We're too busy with bread and, and butter issues. We're too busy putting food on the table. And all of that is important. Put food on the table, man. But make sure, make sure 
that you have time for God. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all other things shall be added unto you. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. That in our lives, we cannot allow making a living prevent us from walking the road of conversion. Let's go a little deeper with it. So it's not only making a living, but casting this, this thing about casting, you're going to throw your net, and you don't know what you're going to catch. I want to say to you tonight that you see this thing about potential and ambition and achievement and success. Sometimes we're so busy with some futuristic potential achievement and success that we don't have time for God. Let me give you a, let me give you a real example. Boy, you have a potential to be a doctor. Don't bother, don't bother with the priesthood. A lie? A lie? You tell your son, you tell your son, you tell your daughter, you could be a, you could be a, you could be a, a surgeon, you could be the surgeon general. Don't worry, becoming a nun. Your potential. That when they was casting the net, the, 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 the net in the lake, there was potential there. All of us have potential, but our potential must never get in the way of God. We can become anything that we want to, but that must never prevent us from being converted. Oh, do you catch me? Shall I go on as you catch me? Because ambition is a hell of a thing. Achievement is a hell of a thing. We have a vision for ourselves, and sometimes the vision for ourselves has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the kingdom. I thank God for the grace in my life. I wanted to be the prime minister of this country one day. I had a, a, a political party already named ADAP, Alliance for Development and Progress. That was my ambition. But God had something else for me. Because you see how prime ministers suffer? I am suffering as a priest. Amen? Because follow me and I will make you into fishers of men. Amidst our own ambition, amidst our own vision for ourselves, God has a vision for us. God has a plan for us. And we have to align our achievements, our desires, our accomplishments, our own vision with God's vision. So God, you are converting me for your vision. You are calling me for your vision. I thank God for that grace in my life that I did not go the way of politics. The final paragraph. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, and they were in their boat doing what? They were in their boat what? Mending their nets. We could talk about that too. Life could wear us down. Repeat it. Life could wear us down. Repeat it. Marriage could wear us down. Repeat it. Marriage could wear us down. Relationships can wear us down. Repeat it. The boss could wear us down. Oh, well, you're smiling for that one. Yes, in the cut and trust of life, we are worn down, we are ground down. We are damaged. Relationships could damage us. People could damage us. Situations and circumstances could wear us down. But that must never prevent us from being converted to Christ Jesus. 
in my own life as a priest. I've had hurt. I've had disappointment. Parishioners have hurt me. Priests have hurt me. People who I taught were my friends have hurt me. I was damaged. But that is not going to allow me not to hear or prevent me from hearing the word, follow me. Amen? Amen. And you, in your life, in your life, it is very easy to be distracted by just trying to do damage control. That your whole life is damage control. <laughs> Monday to Friday is damage control. Don't talk about when you reach home at the wife or the husband and the children and them. Damage control. And when you're reaching the church, damage control. And we may not hear what God is saying to us. I ask for all of us to say to the Lord, Lord, in my casting of the net, this must be a prayer from your heart, from our hearts. Lord God, in the casting of the net, with all my ambition, with all my achievements, with all my successes, with all that could be, that all that I want to be, O oh God, let me still have time for your word and the word of conversion. Amen? Amen. That is our first prayer. And the second prayer, Lord God, as I deal with my damaged nets, as I deal, O oh God, with the wear and tear that I feel from life, from the aging process, from marriage, from a broken marriage, from a difficult family, from health challenges, Lord, may I still hear your word. May I still hear your word. May I still be converted and not be bitter. Because it is very easy, people. You know it and I know it. It is very, very easy in life when we feel worn down. We have been betrayed by friends. We have cyberbullying. We have peer pressure. We have drugs. We have alcohol abuse. We have struggles with pornography. We have all the whole nine yards. We have neighbors from hell. Where them come from? And when we go going through all of that, says, ask for the grace, God, let me still have time for your word. It's, a, it's about our energies. Where are we focusing our energies? And only on damage control? Only on casting the net? Only on making an achievement and success and climbing the ladder? Do we have time for this thing we call conversion? That God is calling each and every one of us to. Let's pray from the heart. Let's go into a moment of silence. You know your story and I know my story. We know our stories. Ask God to remain focused on those words. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Amen. We thank you, O oh God, for your word today. Your word broken for us. Grant us the desire to be converted more and more to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, in the casting of our nets and in the mending of our nets, help us still to remember that you are calling us to follow you. Lord, hear us. Lord, for those who have no time for God, for the narrative of conversion, for the call to follow, to follow you, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, uh, that they would make the time, that they would carve out space in their lives to serve you, to know you, to search for you, and to find you. All our prayers we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant we pray, Almighty God, 
that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I also want to acknowledge Father Matthew, who has, been, who has celebrated Mass with us this evening. Father, thank you for your words of wisdom, your powerful words of wisdom, and for celebrating with us this evening. We ask God choices, blessings upon you, and we ask him to keep you safe. So, thank you all. Thank you, Father. Brothers and sisters, I wish you a joyful week. Um, with you all, um, Father Steve, you know Father Steve is my brother, so I couldn't tell him no, um, so I have to run back to Port of Spain. So I won't shake hands, so I'll give you a, a virtual shake hand and, and have, a, have a wonderful start to your week. But listen, I have a secret for all of you. You, know, you promise not to tell anybody. Don't tell anybody this, eh? I call Steve today. Stay, Steve, how are you going? Boy, the man song in real dumb, real dumb. I say, dog, what happened? He said, I'm missing my parish. I'm missing my parish. He said, I love them. I love them. I spent about 45 minutes, almost an hour, counseling him. The man, like he on suicide, wash here, eat for two days, three days. He coming back to so. So whatever all you do to Steve, he love all you like pig love mud. <laughs> but don't tell him I tell all you that I understand that he have a tabanka for all you, you know. He counting down the days to come back the man take a little vacation. He coming counting down the days. Don't tell him I tell all you. Eh? <laughs> Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God will bless you all, guide you, and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go to announce the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.